Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion is he living now probably is the antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination it seems so. In the absence of regulation and strong government oversight, some technology companies choose to prioritize profit over the well-being of their customers, the safety of our communities, and the stability of our democracies. So declared Biden's AI czar Kamala Harris issuing a stark warning to tech companies comply or we will force you to comply. And such subtle and not so subtle threats to free speech are becoming standard practice of governments across the globe. In Brazil, Elon Musk's X has been banned. And the speech police in the UK and the EU, they're seeing their own threats to individuals and organizations that get out of line. And now Australia, they're targeting free speech as well. It wants to fine internet platforms up to 5% of their global revenue for failing to prevent the spread of misinformation online. How will they determine what constitutes so-called misinformation? Well, the government said it would make tech platforms set codes of conduct governing how they stop dangerous falsehoods spreading to be approved by a regulator. This has been the plan all along for the global elites. They know that their only chance of holding on to power is to silence those who resist or question them. We saw this during COVID. Fortunately, though, in our country, we, for at least right now, have the First Amendment. But increasingly, our globalist billionaires, they want a free speech workaround. Every country struggling to find that boundary. The U.S. is, is a tough one because, you know, we have the notion of the First Amendment. And so what, what are the exceptions? The notion of the First Amendment, that gave it away. Well, we have the inalienable right to free speech. Yeah, you can't scream fire in a crowded theater, uh, but the notion of the First Amendment. <laughs> of course, to Gates, though, someone like Trump, he's a problem because he still believes in all that First Amendment stuff. And of course, Gates is praising Harris, saying, I think it's great to have somebody who's younger, who can think about things like AI and how we shape that in the right way. Now, it's hard to believe that Gates wouldn't have a huge influence in the Harris administration. Remember, he wants to develop a more powerful internet surveillance system. We're going to have to have systems and behaviors that we're more aware of, OK, who, who says that? Who, who created this? Plus, we already know how little Kamala cares about protecting your free expression. It's protected, essentially, in her way of thinking, unless the government says it isn't. Misinformation and disinformation has infiltrated um, information streams in our country. I fully expect and would require that leaders in that sector cooperate and work with us who are concerned about national security, concerned about upholding and protecting our democracy. Joining us now, Glenn Greenwald, Pulitzer Prize winning independent journalist. How alarmed should Americans be about this obvious move to limit and maybe even ban certain types of speech worldwide? Extremely. I mean, the whole idea of the internet, the advent of the internet, was that we were finally going to have a technology, this innovative tool that would emancipate citizens around the world from not being able to be censored or surveilled by centralized corporate and state power. Western elites began to conclude we cannot allow a free internet. We can't allow free speech and people to organize freely because when they do, 
We can't control their behaviors any longer. We can't control how they vote or how they think. They set out on a path to figure out how they could systemically start controlling speech and the flow of information on the internet to ensure that our citizens live in a closed system of propaganda and information that they control. It's interesting that Kamala Harris is taking that notion of freedom and trying to really co-opt it and saying, no, 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 we're the protectors of freedom. We're the ones who will safeguard your freedom. And Donald Trump is, is the tyrant. Donald Trump is the dictator. But this is common, and I know you, you reside in Brazil, so it's a common tactic that we're seeing grow across the uh, world. You know, the book that we're all given in high school and college is Americans to understand tyranny, to start to think about how authoritarianism happens and propaganda uh, is, is fed to us to justify it, is the George Orwell uh, novel 1984 from the mid-20th century. And one of the features of the tyrannical government that Orwell was trying to warn about was the Ministry of Truth, the power residing in the hands of the government, people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden to determine for us, not through our reason, not through our free discourse, but determined by them what is true and what is false, and then ban what they regard as false. For example, during the COVID pandemic, as Mark Zuckerberg said, the government was insisting that content be removed that, in the words of Mark Zuckerberg, was either A, reasonably debatable, or B, turned out to be true. Nobody who wants to be a free citizen should trust the government to determine what is true, what is false, what Kamala Harris thinks is Mr. Disinformation, because they're going to interpret that always for their own interest and nothing else. The unsaved hold the view there is no right or wrong. Therefore, whatever feels or seems right at the time and in that situation is right. Christians hold the view that there are indeed absolute realities and standards that define what is true and what is not. To the unsaved, Tolerance has become the one cardinal virtue of the postmodern society, the one absolute, and therefore, intolerance is the only evil. Any dogmatic belief, especially a belief in absolute truth, is viewed as intolerance, the ultimate sin to an unbeliever. If there is absolute truth, then there are absolute standards of right and wrong, and we are accountable to those standards. This accountability is what people are really rejecting when they reject absolute truth. The denial of absolute truth and the cultural relativism that comes with it are the logical result of a society that has embraced the theory of evolution as the explanation for life. If evolution is true, then life has no meaning, we have no purpose, and there cannot be any absolute right or wrong. Man is then free to live as he pleases and is accountable to no one for his actions. Yet, no matter how much sinful men deny the existence of God, and absolute truth, they still will someday stand before God in judgment. The Bible declares this in Romans 1, 19 through 22, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Is there any evidence for the existence of absolute truth? Yes, there is the human conscience, that certain something within us that tells us the world should be a certain way, that some things are right and some things are wrong. Our conscience convinces us there is something wrong with suffering, pain, and evil, and it makes us aware that love Generosity, compassion, and peace are positive things for which we should strive. The Bible describes the role of the human conscience as we read in Romans 2, 14-16. For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, God has revealed his truth to us through his word, the Bible. Knowing absolute truth is only possible through a personal relationship with the one who claims to be the truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and the only path to God. The fact that absolute truth does exist, points us to the truth that there is a sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth, 
and who has revealed himself to mankind in order that we might know him personally through his Son, Jesus Christ. That is the absolute truth. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The Houthis keeping their promises. Iran's Yemeni proxy launched a long-range ballistic missile at central Israel on Sunday morning. Sirens sounded in numerous cities, the IDF said. The missile landed in an open area after multiple interceptors managed to hit the missile, causing it to fall apart mid-air, only partially intercepting it. The Yemeni armed forces carried out a special military operation, targeting a military target in the area of Jaffa inside Israel. This operation was executed with a new hypersonic ballistic missile, which successfully reached its target. The enemy's defenses failed to intercept and counter it. Fallen shrapnel caused damage in multiple areas, including a train station near Modi'in. There were no injuries as a result of the strike or the interception attempts, but nine people were injured running to shelters. The missile traveled a distance of 1,260 miles in 11 and a half minutes and caused a state of fear and panic among the Zionists as more than two million of them headed to shelters for the first time in the history of the Israeli enemy. According to the Iranian-backed militia, the attack came in response to a July 20th Israeli airstrike on the port of Hudeida. Fourteen people were killed in the strike, and the Houthis vowed to retaliate in a continuous manner. The enemies will be surprised on land, as they were surprised at sea, with new and unprecedented technologies. We will spend no effort in supporting the Palestinian people. This was the third Houthi strike that managed to bypass Israel's multi-layered air defenses. Back in March, a cruise missile landed in an open area near the southern city of Eilat, causing no damage or injuries. And two months ago, a drone launched from Yemen exploded on an apartment in Tel Aviv, killing one man and wounding four others. <laughs> We are in a multi-front battle against Iran's axis of evil that strives to destroy us. This morning, the Houthis launched a surface-to-surface -surface missile from Yemen into our territory. They should have known by now that we exact a heavy price for any attempt to harm us. Those who need a reminder in this matter are invited to visit the port of Hodeida. Anyone who attacks us will not escape from our arms. After Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones at Israel, which were mostly intercepted, Israel boasted at its cutting-edge air defenses. Now, the Houthis have shown that even a single missile can bypass them, raising unease as to the efficacy of Israel's defenses. The Israeli Prime Minister is also warning Israeli forces may be about to turn their focus to Hezbollah, one of Iran's key proxies in its war against the Jewish state. The goal of Netanyahu's government is to return some 60,000 Israelis forced out of their homes in the north by nearly daily rocket attacks from Hezbollah. The current situation will not continue. We will do whatever is necessary to return our residents securely to their homes. Israeli warplanes are already striking Hezbollah targets in Lebanon to weaken the terror group before what could be a full-blown Israeli ground invasion of southern Lebanon. What was initially believed to be an unusual series of Israeli airstrikes in Syria early Monday turns out to be closer to the plot of a Hollywood action movie. Syrian opposition TV and a Greek researcher separately reported that the dramatic raid, which lasted an hour, began with a series of airstrikes on the research center 
the surrounding roads, and military facilities. Then, Israeli commando forces were airdropped into an IRGC military facility for developing ballistic missiles and drones, withdrawing with important equipment and documents, including the reported capture of two to four Iranian officers. The forces then laid charges and exploded the site, destroying it completely, before pulling out under heavy air support. Both Syria and Iran denied the reports. This aggression came in waves. It was a brutal and savage aggression. Till now, we have 18 killed and 37 injured. The injuries vary from critical to light. The health sector in Hama is doing its best by providing necessary aid to the injured. Meanwhile, an Israeli drone eliminated a Hezbollah operative in the Kunetra countryside in southwest Syria, the IDF said, further illustrating how Syria has become a support front for Iran's Lebanese proxy. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. A vote for Harris is a vote for a U.S. war with Russia. Various reports this week indicate that the Biden-Harris administration is preparing to announce that it'll authorize Ukraine to use American weapons inside Russian territory and deep inside. Well, naturally, Putin is taking this as a U.S.-sanctioned attack on Russian territory, which it is. If this decision is made, it will mean nothing less than the direct participation of NATO countries, the United States, and European countries in the war in Ukraine. This is their direct participation, and this, of course, significantly changes the very essence, the very nature of the conflict. This will mean that NATO countries, the United States, and European countries are fighting Russia. This is the most dangerous moment, I think, for the United States since the end of the Cold War. Kamala Harris, you see what's going on in the world. Afghanistan, we know what took place there. It was horrendous. Even Iraq now is really part of the Iranian uh, hegemony. You see what's going on with the Houthis. We can't even use the Red Sea anymore. They've cut it off and we haven't pushed back. Hezbollah has effectively conquered Lebanon and shooting missiles into Israel. Uh, Hamas will not surrender and will not surrender the hostages. Uh, Communist China is threatening Japan, Australia, the Philippines, South Korea, Vietnam, and of course Taiwan. Russia is constantly threatening us with nuclear attack. Meanwhile, we are debasing our military. The communist Chinese now have more ships than we do, and they're not stopping, and we are. Is this the right time to have Kamala Harris as commander-in-chief? <laughs> well, you laid it out as, 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 uh, as best I've heard it. Of course not. Uh, first of all, she's a Marxist at home. Then she's a globalist and apologist overseas. And, you know, most empires lose their influence around the world because they lose their compass at home. That certainly happened under Obama. It's, it's fast forwarded under Biden and under Marxist Kamala Harris, comrade uh, Kamala. It would accelerate. We know exactly who she is. She is a radical. Cratering our sense of self, our southern border, our national identity, our love of country, um, and, and, and certainly our military. And Obama went on that apology tour where America was no longer leading boldly. Uh, Biden has just been basically AWOL and not believing in American leadership. And then through the small actions he has taken, he signaled complete retreat. And Kamala Harris will be deferential to institutions like the UN, like UNRWA, um, all these organizations captured by leftists that don't serve American interests. Our influence abroad will continue to diminish. So our allies, like Taiwan, like Israel, uh, like a, a shrinking number of countries, <laughs> Uh, are going to turn to having to do things themselves because they can't count on America. And that's when our enemies pile on. And when the global global order, and I use that in uh, without uh, not capitalized, 
uh, because I don't want a global order controlled by elites. But when after World War II, the, U, the, the U.S. sort of took control of that, um, that's all going to shift with China, with Russia, with the Islamists teaming up against us. Kamala Harris has no plan to defend America's interests. So the world will be on fire, Mark. What you just laid out will sound like tiddlywinks compared to the possibility of World War III under a feckless, weak leader like Kamala Harris. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to four billion. Investigators are learning more about the man who tried to assassinate former President Trump yesterday. Police arrested him shortly after a Secret Service agent spotted the muzzle of a rifle and some shrubs aimed at Trump. It was the second assassination attempt on Trump in just nine weeks. 58-year-old Ryan Wesley Routh, the alleged gunman who authorities said targeted former President Trump, was a former roofing contractor from Greensboro, North Carolina, but had moved to Hawaii. He is reported to have donated exclusively to Democratic candidates and causes as far back as 2019, and apparently was a Trump supporter in 2016 before turning against him. Routh posted on social media that Trump's campaign should be called Make American Slaves Again. Routh, who has no military experience, was interviewed in 2022 by Newsweek about his strong support for Ukraine in its war against Russia, a cause he was heavily involved with and concerned about. This conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. Routh said he was willing to fight and die in Ukraine and told the New York Times in 2023 that he had traveled to Ukraine and wanted to recruit Afghan soldiers to fight there. Police said Routh had positioned himself behind a fence at Trump International Golf Club and had an AK-47 rifle with scope and body armor along with two backpacks and a GoPro camera. He was between three and 500 yards from the former president and appeared to be aiming a gun near him. An agent that jumps one hole ahead of time to where the president was at. And he was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engage that individual, at which time the individual took off. Routh fled in his car but was caught in a neighboring county. Former President Trump issued a statement saying, My resolve is only stronger after another attempt on my life. I will never slow down. I will never give up. President Biden issued a statement saying there is no place for political violence or for any violence ever in our country, and promising to give the Secret Service every resource it needs to protect the former president. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, 
having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The death toll in Central and Eastern Europe rose on Sunday after days of torrential rain triggered flooding and burst riverbanks. Officials in Romania said on Saturday that several people died and thousands of homes were damaged by flooding in the eastern part of the country. In Galati County, residents faced fast-flowing floodwaters that destroyed their homes and killed pets and livestock. It destroyed everything. I don't have anything left. The beds are filled with mud, the pillows are filled. I have nowhere to sleep. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Tens of thousands of households have been left without power in the region, with the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, southern Germany and parts of Austria also expected to see more heavy rain. Czech news agency CTK reported that more than 50,000 households had their electricity supply cut off, mostly in the north and northeastern areas. Forecasters warned that parts of the country could see more than a third of average annual rainfall by Sunday. The country's environment minister urged people in the worst hit areas to prepare to leave their homes. Residents of the Czech Republic have been working to assess the damage caused by floods devastating Central Europe. Most of the country has been affected by floods, but the situation has been worst in two northeastern regions where authorities declared a state of emergency. A number of towns and cities were submerged on Sunday, with thousands of people evacuated. On Monday, waters began to recede, leaving behind destroyed bridges and damaged roads. These floods are definitely worse than those of 1997. Two meters of water ran through the street, and there was a whirlpool that damaged the house. Now it may need to be taken down. There have been many, many ruined cars floating down the street. It's terrible. People will have a lot of work to do. As torrential rain from Storm Boris continues to pound Central Europe with record rainfall, rivers have been bursting their banks, also devastating Austria, Poland and Romania. We are living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. God in his grace and mercy is warning the world of his impending judgment. The Bible refers to this judgment as the tribulation in which God will pour out his wrath on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. I have had many people ask the question, how do you know Jesus is returning? And why is today any different than any other time in history? Jesus gives his followers the answer to that question in Luke 21:28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Jesus told his followers that there would be a convergence of Bible prophecy right before his return. Notice Jesus said, when these things begin to happen. Jesus used the plural word things, meaning when you see multiple prophecies converging at the same time, that his return was at the doors, as we read in Matthew 24, 33. So you also, when you see all these things, Know that it is near, at the doors. There can be no denying all these things are beginning to take place. The next question is, how soon is the rapture of the church? City streets turned into a lake. While some residents of Tangu and Myanmar use makeshift rafts, others are forced to wade through waist-high water. Almost a quarter of a million people in the country have been forced from their homes by the flooding brought by Typhoon Yagi. I lost my rice chickens and ducks. I don't care about the other belongings. Nothing else is more important than the lives of people and animals. The scale of the disaster has prompted a rare appeal by Myanmar's military junta. It's under Western sanctions and has previously blocked humanitarian aid. But now state media has reported that the junta is calling for international assistance. Typhoon Yagi has caused chaos across much of Southeast Asia. In Laos, the Mekong River burst its banks, while in Thailand, emergency services have been using helicopters, boats and jet skis to rescue residents trapped by high water and mudslides. Vietnam was hit especially hard by Typhoon Yagi. More than 250 people have been confirmed dead and dozens are still missing. Portugal has requested assistance from the European Union as a series of wildfires reach residential areas across the country. Authorities have warned more than 100 municipalities are at extreme risk as emergency services struggle to control at least nine fires, made worse by high temperatures and wind. The situation is particularly critical in the Alentejo and Aveiro regions, where flames have consumed several houses and killed a firefighter.
Spain is expected to send firefighting aircraft to help tackle the fires in the next few hours. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. Joel 1.15 Alas for the day! For the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, Repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.